The internet is undeniably one of the most revolutionary tools of our time. It has filled every aspect of our lives, from communication to education, finance and leisure. But where did such a system come from? Well, the internet's creation owes a great deal to 1960s psychologist and computer visionary Joseph Carl Robnick Licklider, or Lick for short. Born March 11, 1915, in St. Louis, Missouri, Licklider went on to study at Washington University where he triple majored in physics, mathematics, and psychology. Afterwards, in 1942, he received his PhD in psychoacoustics at the University of Rochester. Although a psychologist made for an unlikely year in computing, Licklider introduced fresh perspectives on the technology that fostered revolutionary new thought for a relatively young technology. In many ways, Licklider was the Johnny Appleseed of computing, as he envisioned a world richly integrated with computer power, planting seeds for innovation in the computer science field that would ultimately bear the fruit of the internet. Computers were slow to gain recognition because of their blatant impracticalities. The fact was that there were only a few computers during that age, and they were being used by government agencies, universities, and large corporations. Computers of the age were large enough to take up multiple air-conditioned rooms, making them a multi-million dollar investment. However, the most significant flaw was how excessively irritating and complex it was for their human operators to actually make use of the system. Every program would need to be printed, physically transferred to the computer, and installed manually. Licklider was first exposed to the computer's major limitations while working as an associate professor at MIT. At MIT, Licklider had access to a real-time computer called Whirlwind and began to envision a whole new world. He realized that computers had the potential to accelerate the human mind's capacity to analyze information. Computers were extremely expensive, so they, they were tasked to do what they did best, which is computational. I mean, even right now, is all the computers we're really doing is you know, adding you know, digits, bytes, and whatever else, right? Which just we added a whole user interface on top of that that makes it easier for everybody to use. Lick captured his personal view for computers in his 1960 paper, Man Computer Symbiosis. The basic premise was the computer would be able to support the human mind and extend its capacity for thinking. Licklider stated the relationship between the computer and its users should be symbiotic, where men is to set goals, create hypotheses, and perform the evaluations while the computer do all the routine work in order to allow for a higher level of thinking to be done. The two points of issues would be, one, to allow computers to produce the results of a solution given from men, and two, to have men and computers cooperate in order to solve and control complex situations. This idea also required the need of creating an easy-to-use interface so that the user could use a computer to its fullest potential without worrying about the complicities. Lick advocated for this use of interface as it would assist in connecting man and computers together. The vision was really Lick's in the, in the, in the originally. I mean, any, none of us can really claim to have seen that before him, nor anybody in the world. I mean, Lick saw this vision in, in the early 60s. Man-Computer Symbiosis would later catch the attention of Jack Ruina, director of ARPA, in 1961, and he would ask Lick to join the group. The U.S. Advanced Research Project Agency, ARPA, was influenced by Lick's concepts. Lick would create contracts with other computer research institutions and gain the help from many universities and companies to assist in the creation of ARPA. He was hired to become the director of the Information Processing Techniques Office, or IPTO. When he joined, Lick would be given over 10 million US dollars from the government and was free to conduct whatever he wanted. From this point, Lick began creating a community from around the world who had shared his concepts. He funded projects like Project Mac, multi-access computer, at MIT which was the first attempt for large-scale time-sharing. Lick helped push for time-sharing within ARPA. Time-sharing is when a computing resource is distributed or shared to multiple users by utilizing multitasking or multi-programming. Additionally, time-sharing would be able to connect multiple users along one computer, which allowed for more efficient computers. This process opened the possibilities of lower costs and people would have access to it without the need for owning one. Computers became more accessible and known to the public. Lick's human-computer interaction was taking its first steps in assisting the creation of the Lick's idea was radically different. He wanted close interaction between the individual researcher and the computer. Lick Leiter had managed to 
convince a lot of people that this was a good idea. And Charlie was persuaded that uh, building a network uh, for the research community was actually a good thing for a variety of reasons. Um, sharing computer resources was a motivation. His memos in 1963, which was sent to the members and affiliates of the Intergalactic Computer Network, addressed his ideas to many of his colleagues. He outlined some of the many uses people could gain from the Intergalactic Computer Network. These uses like lists include, but are not limited to, cloud computing, e-commerce, online banking, emails, and digital libraries. More importantly, they considered how time sharing would be possible with their current software and the limitations and problems that his team had to face. These ideas were instilled into many men like Bob Taylor, Larry Roberts, and Doug Engelbert, and eventually led to ARPA creating ARPANET after Lick left. After leaving his imprint in ARPA, Lick went out to create two more crucial papers that help outline the internet, Libraries of the Future in 1965 and The Computer as a Communication Device in 1968. Libraries of the Future explain one of the current purposes of today's internet, the digital library. Lick believed that all information would be public to every use throughout the globe as long as they connected within the network of computers. His paper outlined how information would be organized, acquired, and used. The Computer as a Communication Device was written with Bob Taylor, another internet pioneer who followed Lick's ideas. Lick and Taylor's ideas advanced the functions of the current computer, which was advanced calculations. In order to create such a communication device, they required his network that he envisioned. They believed communicating was far more than the process of sending and receiving. It expanded past and passive uses of books and libraries. Once computers were to be connected, they would be active participants who could interact with the information available and continue a growth process. Establishing a connection between the users and knowledge would allow for a higher level of human interaction and understanding. Lick had an optimistic view towards his network which helped envision an invention that one can view holds American ideals. Lick always includes in his paper that the internet must be publicly open to everyone, which held a democratic and egalitarian approach. Moreover, this network would allow free speech as people could communicate along it. However, Lick was restricted from his optimistic point of view, which only believed that the internet would be used for the good of humanity, knowledge, and information. He never realized the commercial and criminal uses of the internet would completely destroy some of the American standards that he endorsed. Today's internet is plagued by a lack of privacy, security, and freedom. Powerful corporations and governments can have complete control over the users of the internet. Net neutrality and soap are some of the 21st century problems that attack today's internet. Moreover, the NSA and companies like Google can view the user's search history and use it for their own means, breaking the privacy of the user. Finally, today's security is far too weak, and hackers are able to access the user's private and important information. There are other problems with the internet, but it's these problems that Lick would be most disappointed about as it destroys his American ideals of democracy and equality. Three-sevenths, or three billion of the seven billion people, the entire population in 2015 is using the internet right now at this moment. There are multiple uses of today's internet and it has changed the world in multiple ways. The internet has allowed for a sense of anonymity, an expansion of communication and networking, a new wave of crime and unethical practices, more enjoyable types of gaming and entertainment, more reliable ways of information acquisition and preservation, more competitive marketing techniques, an increase in media consumption and distribution, an open source for opinion and criticism, extension of retail commerce, and more accessible service commerce. It's truly remarkable that JCR Licklider was able to predict our reliance of computers. He really started with the simple idea of bettering computers by having them talk to each other, and this concept has become the basis of everyone's lifestyle. Not only has Lick created the internet, but any private or public network that connects computers together. Thanks to him, he has helped integrate people across the globe into a single community. The computer technology has been moving in a way that nothing else people have ever known has moved. Here's a field that gets a thousand times as good in 20 years.